everyone. My name is Maureen, and as the president of the Nanotechnology World Association and sponsor of the Nanoscientific Symposium, I would like to welcome all of you connected with us today. 2020 has been a challenging year for many of us, uh, but it was also a catalyst to make us realize that we can work together despite the distance and that the power of today's technology made a tremendous difference on how we handle that global crisis. Understanding the relation between humans and technology is key to responsible development and acceptance of future technologies in almost every application field, be it um, energy, mobility, health, work, living, learning, entertainment, etc. We need to understand better how past technologies have deeply changed human existence and how future technologies may impact us as human beings and our society. This reflection will help to design technologies with maximal values and minimal frictions in a way, uh, in a responsible way. But how can we connect the world of academic research and real life applications? How to make sure that the amazing discoveries that are made every day in labs around the world and that are truly have the potential to have serious impact on today's world can successfully be transferred uh, from lab to market. This is exactly the reason why the Nanotechnology World Association was created. Our mission is to globally promote nanotechnology solutions adoption across industries by connecting entrepreneurs with scientists and startups with investors. Uh, before we dive into uh, the issues of nanotechnology tech transfer and the strategies to overcome them, allow me to share a quick overview of who we are and what we do. NWA was created in 2011. Um, at first, it was just an information blog, keeping geeks like me, up to date with the latest discoveries in physics, and more precisely in the field of nanotechnology. Fast forward a few years, um, and we had a fast growing network of over 100,000 followers with a common need to be connected to each other. Our network is a mix of people from academic, uh, industrial, and financial worlds, geographically spread around the globe. After several discussions with close contacts uh, from the network, we agreed that the time was right to officially launch the association with the help of 11 funding members, all from the nanotech industries. The Nanotechnology World Association was officially launched in October 2019. Uh, we can also count on the help of and support of the board of directors and the board of advisors deeply involved in various segments of the value chain. Coming from academic and industrial worlds, these experts are helping the association create the necessary tools and solutions to facilitate uh, the nanotechnology tech transfer. Over the next five years, we will launch several services uh, for our members such as cross-sectors, networking events, um, annual conferences, workshops, work groups, etc. Uh, the COVID crisis uh, forced us to postpone most activities, uh, but we are ready to resume all events as soon as the world opens for our business again, hopefully in January. So our uh, services and activities are specifically designed to enable, support, and facilitate the nanotechnology transfer from lab to market. On a daily basis, we connect people. We keep our network up to date with science articles. Um, we organize and centralize information, and we help commercialize new technologies by bringing them together, uh, bringing together the right individual uh, around the table. Our platform is also designed to allow uh, members to create their own local activities, and we are planning on creating local chapters uh, in the upcoming months. Now that, you, um, now that you know a little bit more about us, uh, let's get into the topic of today's discussion about the challenges that the commercialization of nanotechnology represent and the solution 
uh, that would greatly help the process. Having a great technology is a necessary start, of course, but how do you get uh, from there to having a successful, successful sorry, product? Um, there are many reasons why nanotechnology uh, startup or technology startup fail. The number of reason, um, the number one reason is uh, irrelevance, uh, no market needed. This recent study on over 100 startups' failure uh, highlighted the lack of market need, uh, the, 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 that the lack of market need was a factor of 42% of failures. 42%, see, this is uh, really a huge number. Also, you can have a good tech that fits a market need, but a team with no entrepreneurship skills, it will fail. If you have a good tech, a good a market need, and uh, entrepreneurship, but lack the funding, it will fail. So to create a successful product, we need all of these four ingredients. Currently, this is the process that tech goes through uh, to become a market product. On the academic side, you have researchers who don't know the market, who aren't really interested in business, or who may have all sorts of different personalities and skills. On the other side, um, there are industrials who have a very specific needs to enhance the quality of their products. And although they might have heard about nanotechnology um, and how it can help them, they don't really know how uh, it can be done. They don't really know what's available and how they can benefit from it. This leaves a gap. Uh, at a crucial time in this process, right when the technologies are mature enough to leave the universities and go through and go out to the market, yet this is the moment when we are the least equipped to deal with this. Um, there is a lack of communication, information, connections between these two worlds, which prevents a large number of technologies from hitting the market. Of course, most universities do have tech transfer offices uh, that understand the process which you need to go through to move forward and potentially patent and commercialize any aspect of your work. Um, they support researchers uh, from an administrative and legal angle, helping them uh, licensing, funding, connections. But as per as many researchers told us, the process is long, complicated and very administrative. Furthermore, they are not, um, they're, they are not nanotechnology specialists, uh, but rather generalists having to support a broad range of disciplines. So at this point uh, and on a global scale, the connection between academy and aid industry is not optimal. To create a bridge uh, to optimize this whole well scientific, technical, and commercial ecosystem, there are many options to ensure that nanotechnology make its way from the lab to the end users and uh, succeed in improving the life uh, for all of us. We need our scientists to have freedom to explore with fundamental research, but we also need to uh, part um, of the, we also need part of the academic uh, world discoveries to be commercialized to help solve the issues we face as a society. The goal is to maximize the role of our universities in contributing in the optimization um, of the use of their research and uh, the impact on our future without removing their freedom of research. If you look around at the biggest startups that we all know about, all these people um, are incredibly creative thinkers. Uh, they think outside the box. Um, and my feeling is that sometimes in academia, they don't necessarily pay much attention or acknowledge or even reward that kind of way of thinking. Uh, specifically when we talk about commercializing, commercializing sorry, or potentially creating a startup company from an area of research. The um, required create, creative thinking to reach commercial success is not necessarily encouraged 
uh, on the academic side. It's not rewarded from an academic point of view. We also need to create more dialogue between academic researchers and uh, industrial tech teams so that they can learn to understand each other, their needs and their realities. In order for scientists to identify business opportunities and generate ideas related to their research, having direct inputs from a commercial point of view uh, would seriously help the process. Generally, um, researchers don't have time to make a proof of concept when they want to validate that a discovery has a potential. They need some sort of commercial validation before investing time toward a potential product. On the other hand, most industrials and investors will require a proof of concept as a first step uh, of the exploration phase. On the academic side, it would be useful to translate their technology, their um, research, into commercially understandable material for industrial, so, so that the tech people from the industry understand more easily how they could beneficiate from that new tech and how they could incorporate it into their product. Um, regarding the gap between what comes out from the lab and what is needed from the industry, we could also imagine the creation of specific PhD programs funded by the industry partners um, focusing on technologies needed for their products enhancement and allowing researchers to work on that research within their academic reality. On the industrial side, uh, the creation of startup accelerators, business incubators are paramount. We need to incorporate academic researchers into the industrial R&D process. Um, we need to create the links through events, uh, work group, information sessions, etc. To summarize, um, a scientist with business knowledge and understanding of the industrial reality are rare. The skills needed to be a successful tech entrepreneur are not the same skills as um, that makes a good scientist and vice versa. So mentorship uh, from business-oriented scientists who are also comfortable with the process um, cross-sector activities, academy industry networking events, hands-on training, support services, work groups, case studies, etc. are necessary to educate and build confidence in the researchers since most of them uh, think it's not for me, I don't know much about that world, commercializing is not uh, commercialization is not really the reason I went into this, etc. Um, we also need to work on ways, uh, on the way we do things in university. For example, when um, in the process of licensing a technology for uh, researchers, um, well, in licensing a technology, a researchers cannot publish anything related to that work during the entire period of the patenting process. Uh, which can last sometimes a few years. Is it worth it for uh, uh, researchers to do so? So mentors uh, and case studies are gold. It's easier to learn from people who went through the exact same challenges and understand the academic reality. In conclusion, scientific uh, research is the pursuit of knowledge. Um, it isn't bothered by market relevance or irrelevance. Some scientific discoveries are relevant to the market. Some are not. Relevance requires complicit cooperation between science, industry, and funding. To bring science uh, closer to market, industry, uh, and funding, all these fairs must come together must work together. It's all about education, collaboration, meeting the right people, and, um, and that was the initial reason why the association uh, was created, to connect, uh, to inform, to organize, and to commercialize. Thank you very much for your attention.